So now it is my pleasure to introduce Ken Zhang. He's going to present his paper, Zero Trust Security Approach for MOSIS Systems. Uh, good morning, my name is Ken Zhang. Um, I work for L2 Harris and I'm a social architect for the cyber division here in L2 Harris. And I've been mostly involved in architecting type one computer devices for tactical and space systems, as well as developing security and key management in, in infrastructure for a system that, that handles that sensitive data processing. So my topic today is the zero trust security approach for most uh, systems. So most initiative like SOSA has made significant impact to industry to improve the affordability, upgradability, and other abilities to better design. It certainly has and will benefit the DOD to enable more rapid and cost-effective acquisitions and improve lifecycle and supportability. It also helps the industry in steering its product roadmap to provide a standard interoperable solutions to optimize development costs, risks, and time. And given SOSA's example, the consortium drive and enforce alignment with the SOSA principles through the quality attribute listed here. I would like to use them to explain how their positive features may have negative implications on the security aspect of it. In this slide, SOSA attributes are organized to show how some may inversely affect the, the, the other ones, shown on the left and right-hand side of the slide. For example, attribute with interoperability and portability drive for greater sourcing opportunity for more cost vendors. But because it becomes easy to swap parts to integrate into the systems, it may increase supply chain risk since now there are more interoperable supply chain yeah, uh, to be greater no, supply uh, sure products to SOSA. Similarly, that given that the system makes it easier to insert and in, in change hardware and software components, right. it may also lower the barrier for cyber attacks without adequate security, security controls. At last, modularity and scalability drive to optimize resource utilizations. At the same time, this will also imply that systems need to securely host applications and process data of different sens sensitivities. I describe this as a parameter list environment. What I mean by this is that, for example, when we used to have a physical module, a single one that's dedicated to do only like top secret processing, you can just protect that because there's a fine parameter around that particular um, module. For people who are familiar with the term, this is more like a, a mills environment. However, when a physical module or software and hardware resources are being shared or it's being general purpose processing nodes for better scalability, you can no longer effectively draw a, a parameter around these processes. So we've been more facing with a more of an MLS environment. Now I want to look at these security applications in more detail and see how we can mitigate it traditionally and how a zero trust security approach may provide better alternatives. For the increased supply chain risk, traditionally we would just expand embedding process and increase the, the, the rigor of it. Yeah, I think but this can become very expensive. And more importantly, if the increased rigor makes it more difficult and costly for vendors, it may reduce the incentive for them to align um, which limits the benefit of having a wider offerings. On the other hand, we can keep our standard vetting process, but it's trust and the cost hardware and software is being introduced at use. Such components are to be periodically checked for integrity and revoked if potential compromise is detected. The periodicity can be tailored based on how sensitive or critical your system is. For the lower barrier for intrusion and exploitation, we can harm every in in interface, but based on the third implication of having a perimeter list environment, this may not be even pop 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 possible. But even if it's possible, harming some but not other interfaces will have negative impact on the overall interoperability. A better alternative may be to enforce the least privilege policy at a system level, which would manage by a root of trust component in a zero trust architecture. And lastly, such system-wide policy enforcement mechanism should be designed to enable net network segmentation across the system to securely isolate applications and traffic of different sensitivities to protect a perimeterless MLS environment. So the suggested security approach to mitigate security concerns in most systems is previously are based on a zero trust security mo model. A zero yeah. trust security originated from the yeah. commercial world that's designed to minimize exposure to cybersecurity risks in a perimeterless environment, like cloud environment. It's been around for a while now and it's mostly used by users with stringent regulatory or risk averse considerations. The underlying principle is that every applications and inputs are considered malicious and should be guarded against. The five main tenets of the zero trust are having least privilege, secure access enforcement, and more resilient access control, continuous monitoring, and inspection and, and, and log logging mechanism that comes with it. 
This slide shows more of uh, some of the zero trust application in the commercial world. For example, you know, Cisco is thinking about how going from a trusted parameter network environment to a zero trust parameter list will impact the trust boundary as well as feature required to, to secure it. Similarly, Microsoft is looking in point conditional access and dynamic access control for managing resource requests for their cloud services. And now we will we transition to discuss how zero trust approach can be applied to a most aligned systems. For this analysis, I will use SOSA as an example. The diagram shows social architecture and associated uh, mo modules. The focus here is aligning the security related module to the approach, naming the security services, the decryptor, and the guard cross domain service. The network subsystem is related as well to support the network segmentations that we'll discuss in later slides. So first, the core of zero trust security approach is the instantiation of its root of trust. The root of trust is the most secure part of systems. There will be a single root of trust per system, but delegate can be made to improve the, re the resiliency. Depending on the criticality of the system, root of trust should be implemented in a highly secure and trusted hardware, like high assurance or type one uh, platform. Security critical data, such as keys and policies, should be securely provided out of band. There isn't yet an official module allocation in, in SOSA standard for a root of trust, so I'm gonna call this the security manager, which is the term I've been using in related SOSA inter interaction so far. The security manager is responsible for a policy-driven autonomous security functions. This means the security manager can make decisions on its own based on policy to maintain the security posture of the system, which may interrupt all ongoing operations. So this includes like security applications, which is the process to validate trust of hardware and software components being introduced to the system at use, or lot management, monitoring functions, detect, react to attack intrusions, and the privilege to granting and more importantly, revoking security privilege when a compromise is detected. As opposed to current security related SOSA module, like the one listed on the right hand side, you know, um, which would be more of a request response service functions, which would actually help security manager in executing some of its own functions. So kind of a little con up describing how this secured application works. So uh, security application function help mitigate supply chain risks mentioned in the beginning of the slide. Security application is to verify the identity of, the enti of entity as well as validate integrity of, of the entity. As the vendor develops hardware and software entities, they will also develop application evidence associated with their, with their solutions. For hardware, this can be like hardware boot up sequence, and for software, it can be a hash of the image itself. The evidence is then provided security to the mission security authority, which is loaded into the security manager prior to operation. When hardware software is installed in the system, it will start off with no privilege except to communicate with the security manager, thus enforcing the least uh, privilege principle. The newly installed component then provides citation evidence to the security manager to validate. Only successful validation would the security um, manager grant privilege to the new component based on replaced policy. The privilege can, can be controlled by key certificates the module needs to get access to other resources in the system. Uh, let's see, it's up here, okay. All right, so once it gets past the security application, the security manager will need to continuously monitor the system for intrusion exploitations. This can be done by enforcing the collection of security related metrics and logs from the operating modules and running analysis and bits. If compromise detected, the security manager needs to have mechanism to quickly revoke the privilege, the privilege or potentially compromised module to contain the, the in, in, in incidents. If the mechanism is not well thought out, let's say system needs a single key to encrypt all the intermodule communications, then revoking one module will impact the entire system, so that's not resilient at all. So instead, the privilege management need, need, a, need a flexible network segmentation approach. So that brings us to the next topic about network segmentation. So remember, we're dealing with a parameter-less environment, so we'll, ha we'll try to create these software-defined security parameters among the resources of different sens sensitivities. For example, every connection between module can be isolated by encryption with symmetric session keys. Given the last slide, if a module is compromised, revoking the module will only affect the module that has been communicating with this compromised module, but not necessarily the entire system. Given this approach, every module will have a function at its network edge, so shown as NE on a diagram that includes decrypt traffic appropriately. Also, logically speaking, the module would not be directly talking to each other. Instead, there will be an enforcement function that control and monitor traffic and ensure all the network edge security functions are properly keyed 
to support the intermodule communications. So not shown here, a logical place to put this traffic hub like function will be on the switches on in, in, in the system. Last remember one of the motivation behind network segmentation is to allow the security manager to enforce least privilege more effectively. Yeah. Tying this back to the security application, when a module is introduced to the system, the network edge function only has a pre-placed key to talk to just the security manager. Once validated, the security manager will update the intermodule access policy settings in a traffic enforcement function, which in turn will generate the associated session keys to enable the newly authorized intermodule connections. In a compromised case, the security manager can quickly revoke access okay. associated with a compromised module via the same access policy configurations. The traffic enforcement function would then in turn um, mediate the key exchange to support that change. As mentioned before, to maximize resiliency, there can be delicate localized security manager that tie back to the single road trust through agitation. This will allow the system to be, have more, have security enclave to improve efficiencies of the security function and improve the modularity of the design. Lastly, the zero trust um, security approach is reduced as the possible implementations for social systems to mitigate attack vectors associated with supply chain and a complex MLS environment. SOSA is used as an example of how such approach can be implemented and it requires security capabilities. As part of security's technical working group, we've been engaging with several other PWGs on possibility of adopting this approach in, in, in SOSA, but it's really relevant to all most aligned architectures. So while all design and procurement benefits are being realized through most initiatives, a zero trust approach can help ensure the security and resiliency of systems are not being compromised. And that's the conclusion of my slide.